Hey Connor, you want to help me put some brake lines in today? What do you think? Eh, no, nope. you're just going to scratch yourself instead. So today's plan is to get the brake booster installed here and then we have to get the master cylinder attached on top of that and then run the brake lines from the master cylinder down to the driver's side front brake right here. The passenger side front brake goes over here and then down here we have lines that go to the back of the car for the rear brakes. So here we have the cleaned up master cylinder and brake booster and these of course go together just like this. But before we do that, I actually need to remove the old gasket material here and replace it with a new gasket, but I don't have the OEM gasket for this, so I'm going to use this gasket material that I bought from the auto parts store and then uh, trace the flange of the master cylinder pretty much like this onto the gasket material, cut it out, and then use that to replace this old gasket. So I'm going to do that right now. Actually, if I can get all this off in one piece, I could even use this as a better template. Oh, look at that. So I managed to actually pull this off in one piece, so I'm gonna just trace this onto my piece here to be an even better guide than what I already had. So yeah, I'll just use that. This is a super hard angle to both film and wrench. All right, so here we have the brake booster installed with the master cylinder also installed, and I tried putting on the first brake line from the Suspicious Garage kit and I'm coming across an issue here where the line is really, really tight. There's no slack at all going down this line. And if you look here, there's actually another line. And I, I traced the lines to the back of the car and actually each line here goes to a different caliper. So these are the two rear separate individual brake lines that go to the rear calipers, but the kit only comes with one brake line that goes to the back here and then this other hole here goes to the front two brakes through a T. So that's super annoying. Uh, until I hear back from Suspicious Garage on what to do about this, I'm going to just ignore the brake lines for now, get the engine installed and then I'll have to just run the brake lines underneath the engine and stuff uh, later on.
All right, I'm gonna be pushing. You're gonna be dropping. This one is farther from the frame. Yeah, there you go. Oh yeah, I like it. Thank you, gravity, for the assist there. And wood. And wood. Dude, look at that. Piece of wood. This one puts you on the transmission. Jeff, you have the way you work. That works for you. No, I hate it. I hate how I work. It's the worst. I hate how my brain works. Not much I can do about that. What about electroshock I therapy? I could do that. I thought about it. Although like that's unproven science. Well, Dude, let's just say there's a lot of debate in the scientific for community. Several hundred years, okay? Oh, you son of a bitch! Is that angled correctly? No. It doesn't look like it's. Of course not. I think it's more that it's resting on the cross member. There we go. That's what I was trying to do. Yes. Believe it or not, I put the wrong mounts on the wrong side. <sighs> Alright, so where's... Can you look at that and tell me what the center of this thing is? This? Or the, the center of the crankshaft or whatever? 14 and a half is the center of the crankshaft. And it's almost, if you pull it up, like just measure to the top, you should be exactly 30. Right. Exactly. So, it's like it fair, should be 15. It's within half, half an inch. Yeah. Right. All right, guys, the engine is in the car for the last time, hopefully, until it breaks or whatever. But it is uh, pretty much exactly centered in the engine bay and it is level if i can focus level-ish that will be fixed once i get the actual uh bolts mounted and tightened and everything but otherwise looking good so next ne on to the next step next step thanks for helping out you got it I do need to go through and clean up the valley here because there's a lot of bits of dirt and stuff that have accumulated over the last couple months of having this thing open. Fortunately, I did cram some paper towels in the holes there, so nothing got into the engine, but I do really have to go through and clean all that up. All right, getting back to the drive shaft here, this is the new 31 spline yoke I picked up that matches the Magnum transmission. It got a little rusty just sitting in the garage, which is kind of crazy, but um, I think it's all right. I'll just make sure it's oiled up before I put it in. Um, and here's the old 27 spline from the F-Body. So I need to pull this guy off and put this one on. And I also ordered these U-joints a while ago. I don't remember which one works here. So I have my little gauge here, which I'm gonna use to figure out the diameter of this hole to figure out which of these bearings will fit it best. And hopefully whichever one works also works on this guy. So let's give this a shot. So this looks to be the correct U-join. I'll put the part number in the description below. I actually filmed myself installing the drive shaft, but that footage has gone MIA somehow. So just to show you guys that these four bolts right here actually just bolt in the drive shaft to the drift motion differential and then uh, it's all attached to the transmission as well on the front end. And as I rotate this, the wheels turn. This is me turning the driver's side wheel forward. And here's the front end of the drive shaft attached to the tail shaft of the transmission. And uh, you can see where the new yoke fits. It's the 31 spline yoke that fits the Magnum transmission. And I had that same shop take care of that because it was 20 bucks and I didn't have to burn my face off again. So lesson learned there. And then up here, which is really cool is actually I'm able to use the factory transmission cross member uh, from the automatic transmission in the SC. And I just moved it back one bolt hole. So actually this bolt right here is in the, what used to be this bolt hole 
on the chassis. So I'm going to have to get kind of crafty here and, uh, and probably make some kind of spacer where I can use both holes in the chassis and both holes in the cross member and I don't have to you know basically rebuild the uh, transmission mount you know from scratch. And for the mount itself for the transmission right here I'm actually just using an you know, off-the-shelf uh, Camaro Firebird transmission mount. It's a polyurethane one from I believe Energy Suspension. I'll put the part number in the description below. All right, now that we have the transmission in place with the drive shaft attached, everything is lined up and good to go. I can see where the shifter's gonna pop through, which if I look at my shifter assembly here, it looks like it's approximately gonna be right around here. And that's a good spot for it because that's where the factory, I believe that's where the factory shifter comes through on the uh, manual um, SE300. So I'm gonna cut pretty much just enough for this to pop through, which means I'm gonna use this line here as my guide. So I'm just gonna cut along this line up to here and then back down here again. Well, there's the hole cut. Hopefully that works for my seating position. Or I'll have to get one of those shifters that kind of like cocks back a bit so I can have it closer to me. But I'm gonna go ahead and pop it down there and see how it looks. Well, I was trying to keep the hole small and I wanted to retain these bolts either for uh, you know a shifter boot or uh, some kind of like uh, handbrake uh, plate there but unfortunately I'm gonna have to make this thing bigger so what I think I'll do is this entire piece right here is actually the automatic plate that comes on automatic cars and then the manual cars they have a different entire plate welded in there so I'm just going to take my cutoff wheel and kind of go around the outside here and remove probably just down to this, like maybe here to there and then up here just to make enough room to have this whole plate sit flush with this plane right here. Well, while it's cool seeing the shifter finally up out of the tunnel, and I can see where my hand would be shifting in the future eventually, uh, I have some bad news, and that is that the shifter is not straight up and down. It's like leaning to the left, which means that the engine has pushed back too far, which also means that I need to rethink my motor mounts. So as you can see here, the seal between the transmission output shaft, the tail shaft, and the drive shaft is like super compressed and slammed together. And that's a really big problem because that'll just tear itself to shreds and cause leaking and all kinds of stuff. Well, the good news here is that I managed to move the engine forward an inch and a half or so to get the seal to stop being crushed on the drive shaft. Uh, the bad news is I had to move the engine forward an inch and a half. Once I realized I had to move the engine forward, I actually pulled the engine mounts off, popped it onto a jack, which is down here, and then I just pulled the entire engine forward about an inch and a half, and I'm using this belt right here to, uh, to like pull the engine a little bit to the passenger side and to keep it nice and straight. So it's totally level now, as we can see here, 
and uh, it's pretty much right where it needs to be for the actual mounts to go in. So this will be all ready to go for the next episode. Which of course means I need to rebuild my motor mounts that I made. And actually I'm really okay with this because these mounts, to be honest, were never very good in the first place. You know, I, I uh, flux core welded this sort of like hunk of metal together. Then I used a hockey puck and I put it on a GTO mount that was asymmetrical from left to right sides. It, just, it was never really a good plan in the first place. So uh, actually I'm looking forward to making these things over again from scratch. This time though I'm cheating a little bit because I went on eBay and I got this mount. Uh, I think it was like 80 bucks shipped for the pair. So this already has a slotted mount face for the actual engine block and then it has a isolator already built in here and tabs ready to go. So my plan will be just to extend these tabs because they're about two inches too short for the actual engine bay to go down to where I need it to go in the cross member. And I might actually just replace this entire tab with a longer one so there's no weird welding or anything like that. And then uh, have a plate in the bottom with a hole through it so I can mount it like that. This will be way more secure than my last design. Also gives me some adjustability back and forth. So that's really cool. I'm looking forward to this. So uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more Fully Spool. There's a lot more coming up like these mounts. Uh, check out my social media links at the end of the video. And please do like, comment, and subscribe because it helps me a whole lot. So thanks and see you next time.